So in this video, I'm going to talk about pins, pegs, and pulleys. So in the examples, I'm only going to do them with pulleys, because essentially these things are all exactly the same, and can be modeled with pulleys, but if you see pins, it's the same as a pulley, if you see pegs, it's the same as a pulley. Okay, so a few key definitions you need to know for where the things to talk about later on make sense. So if an object is described as being smooth, that basically means that any object that's in contact with it is going to experience no friction from it. So a smooth slope is one which is not rough, and so anything sliding down experiences no friction. Inextensible means that you usually see this in the context of a string, where basically you can't extend it. So it's not like a spring where you can stretch it. It's not extendable or inextensible. And if you see something that's considered light, that means we're approximating it has no mass. So we usually say strings are light because compared to objects hanging off them, their mass is negligible. One of the key things to we're using when we're doing pulleys is that objects which are connected over a pulley, so like these two objects here are connected over a pulley, as long as the string between them is taut, light, and inextensible, the this object's acceleration must be the same as this object's acceleration. Obviously they're going to be in opposite directions, but the magnitude must be the same. And if they're travelling at speed, they must be the same. And I'll show you an example where we actually have one of the objects stopping and how we deal with that later on, but that's the basic premise we're dealing with here. Okay, so let's look at a first simple example. So we've got two objects, and they're connected by a light in an extensible string, so those assumptions are being covered. One has mass 4 kilograms, and the other one has mass 2 kilograms. Calculate their acceleration and the tension in the string. So as always, let's start with a diagram. I'm still using the highlighting tool. So what we've got here. String passing over, and let's label some forces. So we've got... 4G acting that way, and we've got 2G acting that way, so that means we're going to have tension forces acting that way to move that one, and then that way. So then they'll end up cancelling each other out, but we're useful when we're considering them as separate entities. Okay, so we need to know what the resultant force is to calculate acceleration, so let's think about them. So we've got 4G acting that way and 2G acting that way, that means we're going to have a net force of 4 minus 2G. Okay. So so the force causing the acceleration is going to be 4G minus 2G which is going to be 2g, which is equal to 19.6 newtons. Once you've done quite a few g calculations, you just know all the multiples of 9.8, and these become a lot quicker. And we know the acceleration is force divided by mass using Newton's second law. So we're going to have 19.6, and the mass is going to be 4 plus 2, because it's the mass of the whole system, which is obviously 6. And then if you plug these numbers into your calculator, you'll come out with an answer of 3.27 meters per second to the minus 2. So we've done the first part, we've calculated the acceleration. And now what we want to know is what the magnitude of T is. So what we're going to do actually is draw another diagram. So I'm just going to consider the 2 kilogram mass. And we're going to draw what's called a free body diagram of that. So we've got the 2 kilogram mass and what we've got is 2g acting that way, we've got the tension acting on it that way, and we've got it accelerating at 3.26 da 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 da. Okay? So we know that the tension force this is the one that's causing it to accelerate, must be equal to the weight force plus the resultant force acting on the object. So 
the tension's got to be big enough to overcome the weight force and then provide enough force to cause that acceleration. Let's do a process, it's called factorization. So, because both ter those terms have an m in, we can rewrite it like that. If you don't believe me, multiply it out and see what you get. And then in this case, the mass is 2, 9.8 plus 3.26 dot dot dot. Notice I'm using the unrounded version as usual. And if you do this calculation, you should come up with 26.1 newtons. One, two, three, significant figures. Okay, so that's calculating the tension. Now if we did it for the four kilogram object, we'd get exactly the same tension, which you should, but your diagram would look like this and note your acceleration is would be in the opposite direction if you did that and if you go through exactly the same stages you'll work out exactly the same tension so you can test yourself to see if you've got this okay so that's that so here is the neatly typed out version of what I was just saying so we've got the two numbers there and you can hear so pause it if you want to look at it further. I'm going to move on and look at using pulleys with SUVAC. Okay, so we've got no diagram, so obviously the first thing you should think of is diagram. So four kilogram and two kilogram masses connected over a pulley. Let's draw ourselves a pulley. And so we've got four G acting that way, and we've got two G that way, okay, yep, and they're both starting 0 0.30 above the desk, so we've got that like that, and you want to calculate the maximum height the 2 kilogram mass reaches, so it's starting here, and we want to see how high it gets up here. So what's going to stop it getting higher? Well, as this 2 kilogram mass moves up, the 4 kilogram mass is going to move down. And once it's moved 0.3 meters, it's going to hit the floor. And when it hits the floor, this string is going to start to become slack. And so then the 2 kilogram for is not going to get any force from this anymore. So the only force acting on it then would be gravity which would then cause it to slow down and stop and it would reach some sort of maximum height here which we can calculate. So that's the procedure we're going to be going over here. We're going to assume that it's not going to go over the top of the pulley um, otherwise this gets a whole bunch more confusing. Okay, so what we need to do is work out how fast the 2 kilogram mass is going when the 4 kilogram mass hits the floor. Because if we can do that, then we can use SUVAT equations to calculate the maximum height of the object at that point. So to calculate the velocity, we're going to need the acceleration, because that's going to be constant, which is why we can use SUVAT equations. So, the resultant force acting on the object is going to be 4g minus 2g, you'll recognize these numbers from the last question, which is 2g, which is 19.6 newtons, which gives you your a of f over m, 19.6 divided by 6, which is the 3.26 value we had last time, so we're still sticking with the same numbers. So we want to calculate the final speed, which is v, we don't know, u, they're starting off stationary, so u is 0, a is 3.26, the s, the distance over which the acceleration occurs is 0.3 meters, because if you think about it, in 0.3 meters the 4 kilograms is going to hit the floor, and to a t, we don't know, which means we're going to use this doozy of an equation right here, and we can eliminate that straight away because u is 0, which means we get v square root of 2as, which is, if we plug the numbers in, it's 
square root of 2 times 9.8 times 0.3 equals 1.4 meters per second. So this is how fast the 2 kilogram mass is going when the 4 kilogram one hits the floor. Okay? And it's so far it's currently sort of like up here somewhere, so it's traveled another 0.3 meters. And what we need to work out is how much higher it goes while gravity is causing it to decelerate. So let's scroll that up. So we've got another SUVAT scenario here. We know when it reaches maximum height, the speed is going to be zero. We know the U is this value from the previous question. And A is going to be gravity, and it's acting against it, so it's going to be a minus. Your S is going to be your unknown, and T we don't know. So we're going to still be using this equation. But this time, it's this that becomes zero. So we want to calculate S. It's going to be the minus U squared over 2A. So it's going to be minus 1.4 squared over 2 times minus 9.8. So your two minus signs are going to cancel out. And it's going to give you a height increase of, if we put the numbers in, 0.1 meters. So this is just during this section when it's being decelerated by gravity. So the total height. is going to be the starting height, which was 0.3, and the height while it was still being accelerated by the 4 kilogram mass, which was 0.3, and then plus this height there, which gives you 0.7 meters. So that was quite a tricky little problem using multiple SUVAT equations, but the kind of question you get asked when doing this kind of thing. So here we go. We've got this problem, so on this slide you can see we're calculating the final speed when the 4 kilogram hits the floor, and then we've got the final section where you're calculating the increase in height, and we end up with 0 0.7 meters. And those are the types of calculations you'll end up doing when you're dealing with pulleys.